You post your astro photos on Instagram, on Facebook, and everything's fine. Everybody looks at it, everybody likes it, and it's free. So why should you even bother with another platform, Astrobin, which you even have to pay for? Today we will look at that, and we will look at the advantages that Astrobin offers, the use cases, and we will do a deep dive into the platform so that I can really show you how everything works. Stay tuned. <music> Hey, this is View Into Space, I'm Sasha from Switzerland, so great to meet the nun and thanks for watching my channel. So before we start, a disclosure. I have no affiliation with Astrobin whatsoever. There's no affiliate link below, there's no coupon code, there's nothing I can offer to you or that Astrobin would give to me. This is simply what I know about Astrobin, why I like it and why I use it. So let's start with an overview, what makes Astrobin so unique? and why it is the best platform to publish your astrophotos. So first of all, it is the platform for astrophotography. So while you might not get so many likes in Astrobin, like in Instagram, in Astrobin you get the likes from real astrophotographers. And presently there's over a half a million photos in Astrobin. One of the main reasons it is so popular is the high quality of data. As you might know, when you post photos in Facebook or Instagram, they get heavily compressed and the compression shows. That's why sometimes you really like a picture looking at, at your PC and as soon as you actually upload it in Facebook or Instagram, it looks horrific. And that's because of the compression. And in Astrobin, you can upload the picture in full resolution without any compression. So it looks the same as it looks at your PC. Second of all, Astrobin commits itself to be secure and reliable. You never know what's happening with Facebook, with Instagram, and we see that at the moment life unfold with Twitter, right? So I wouldn't count that a photo that you upload now on Facebook is still there in a year. But it is one of the missions of Astrobin that a photo that you upload now will also be there still in 10 years. So far you will find these features in any major photography platform. But now let's dive into astrophotography. And the first thing that really sticks here out is the metadata. Astrobin asks about any little detail of your picture. What equipment was used, how many pictures were taken, at which date, from which location, and on and on and on. And the great part is that all of that is searchable, which means you want to see photos taken of an object with the same camera as you use, with the same telescope that you use. You can filter that, you can find that, and we will look at that later on. There is a huge equipment database in Astrobin who actually accomplishes exactly that. Another absolute stunning feature of Astrobin is the plate solving. So every picture that you upload, will be plate solved, which means from a location point of view, it is easily searchable by other people and you can search for the same coordinates as your picture in Astrobin. Another amazing features are image revisions. Not everybody of us is prone to that, but you know these people who post on Facebook the picture and then in two days, oh, I have a new revision. And two days later, oh, I revised it again and so on. <laughs> They're never happy with it. So while on Insta you would have to post it again and again and again and you have your whole stream full of the same object, in Astrobin you can actually mark it as a revision and always the newest one is shown, but someone can actually go through all of your revisions and compare them. But beside all the features that actually surrounding your picture upload, there's a real community in Astrobin and you're connected to people, you like their photos, and you exchange your opinion in forums. And the conversation in these forums is almost guaranteed troll-free. You might say, great, sounds amazing, but do I really need that? So let's look now at a few use cases, why this is really valuable to you. Number one, hosting. All the pictures you're uploading to Astrobane are first of all safe, but they're also accessible via a link, which means you want a link your photo in another forum or somewhere in the full resolution 
you can do that with Astrobin. Second, portfolio. If you want to display a portfolio of your best pictures to the world or to whoever you want to show it to, Astrobin is the perfect place. People have access to your photos side by side and they can look at it in every detail in an uncompressed high resolution fashion. Third, inspiration. You don't know what you want to shoot. You know what you want to shoot, but you don't know exactly how it's best framed. You shot it already, but you actually want to look at the color combinations that are possible, or you actually want to see what is possible with your telescope camera combination. All of that and much more is possible in Astrobin. So for preparing your shot and preparing the processing, it's the perfect tool. But also community-wise, if you want to find people who have the same equipment or who live in the same area as you or who like the same objects as you, you can find these photographers there and contact them. And it's a real serious community where you can learn a lot from each other. With that, I want to dive now with you into Astrobin and show you the platform in depth. So here we are on my browser and in Astrobin. I'm already logged in. So first of all, what you need to know is that as stated, Astrobin is mostly a paid site. So you have a free trial, you can do 10 uploads, but pretty soon these are gone and you will have to pay. But quite frankly, it is between $20 for the light version to $60 a year, by the way, for the ultimate version. So it does not cost the world. And already with a light version, it does plate solving and 50 pictures until you have 50 pictures. That's quite a lot. When you're registered and you log in, you get to this homepage. It has the image of the day, which is like a contest. The best picture of the day as evaluated by volunteers will be displayed here. Below are the latest forum entries and below are just some pictures that made their way today into Astrobin. But this is more for the daily coffee, just browsing a little bit around instead of Facebook. Let's now really get into the nitty gritty. There's actually just two pull down menus and that makes it great. It's rather easy. And forum is really forum and only that. So just home, just everything, the latest topics that appear. And if you subscribe to some topics, it will show it here. And the forums, they're quite nicely organized. You have it in different languages. And you have a lot of forums for different equipments. And as stated, they're pretty good moderated, so trolls don't stand a chance here. And there's also no spam, so quite convenient to chat here with other people. But the most power lies in the explore pulldown. And let's explore the explore pulldown from top to bottom. Let's start with the advanced search. When you click on it, you simply get first of all again the pictures as they hit Astrobin. So this one is four minutes ago it was posted. And you see it's a nice mix of deep sky, lunar, solar, and planetary. So everything is available here. But usually you want to look for something specific. For example, let's look at Orion. And here we go. Here we have millions of different Orions. But perhaps I want to know how it would look like with my camera. And now I have all that are actually recorded with my ASI 2600 MC. I can add here additional filters. For example, I can only look at the ones who received an award. Now we can say image of the day. And here, looks, looks that's the only one who actually got the image of the day with this combination. So that's the advanced search. Next, equipment. Astrobin has a huge equipment explorer. So you can look at about everything. For example, let's look at telescopes. These are all the telescopes, 69 pages of telescopes. But I obviously can also just look here. For example, I'm interested now in my ASCAR FRA 400. What I can actually do with that? So interestingly, it actually says it's most often used with the 2600 MC Pro. Pro, so my camera. So looks like I made here a good pairing. And if I go down here, I see now all pictures shot with an FRA 400. So I can look now what's possible and get some, some inspirations. Next, we have constellations. So we have here all the constellations and you might say, so, so why do I need that? 
So the interesting part is that you can actually look at what is at the moment high in the sky. So it's a little bit late, but anyway, here, Orion. And then you can find images shot within this constellation. And why, yeah, this is obviously with Orion mostly the known objects, we might still find some interesting stuff here. Like, for example, this here I find quite interesting. What's that? So that's actually an ultra wide shot with the whole Orion in here. So quite cool. Next, we have of the contest, the top pick nominations, the topics and the image of the day. As stated, the image of the day is selected daily by volunteers. So this is the best of the best. And we can go through and also let itself be inspired. We can also click on it. And then actually look at all the equipment they've used, how many frames they got it, and so on. After that, we get to groups. And groups is something quite amazing. There's some communities within Astrobin, for example, these are the ones I'm a member of, Imagers of Switzerland. So you can also join and get to know the people around you that do astrophotography. And then here, for example, Asgard telescopes, so you can join people who have the same telescope as you. And there are other great groups like Rarely Image Small DSOs, where you can get inspired if you do not want to shoot every time the Orion or the Rosette Nebula. And yeah, Pics Inside Addicts, I think that explains itself. Last but not least, there's also a list of all the astrophotographers that are in Astrobin, and you can sort them by how many images they already posted, how many likes, the total integration time, how many awards they got, and so on. When it comes to the image index, that's quite interesting. It's a number based on how many pictures you post and how many likes you get. You get a higher and higher number. As you can see, my number at the moment is 17.22. So it will still take a long time <laughs> until I'm up here, but that's okay. So far, so good. But let's look at it now from the other side. If you want to post some pictures and if you click here on the huge red button, you get into your own profile and the pictures that you have already posted. And that's also the pictures that people see who visit your profile. So let's look first at a picture that you have posted. What you get into now is what they call the technical card. So you see the picture is plate solved. That is actually done by PixInsight if you have the ultimate subscription. And also up here you see that all the objects contained in this picture are actually displayed. Below that we have all the equipment that I stated, including the software. Then come the acquisition details. So how many frames, how much integration time, in which phase was the moon. We, we even have here a sky plot, where exactly in the sky this frame is. We have the histogram, a description that I entered. And as with Facebook, you can actually leave comments and likes. This button here is really interesting. If you click on it, you can say find images in the same area around 1 degree, 2 degree, 3 degrees and so on. So for example, I could say around 3 degrees. And here they are. First of all, I see pictures like mine, but I see also picture in the vicinity. So if I shot this recently in the vicinity, definitely there's a good opportunity to shoot my next picture. And I might also get inspired by a revision to do it in another color tone, for example. If we now click in the picture, we get to a full frame picture. And so as stated, this is not compressed. This is now the full resolution and also still plate solved if I want to. And then I can go back to the technical card. So next up here we have some menu points. I think interesting is share. As I told you before, I can create here a link. And as a link destination, I can have here the technical card, but I can also simply have the full resolution picture. And then I have here the link. I can, for example, state that in another forum and they have access to my full picture without going to Astrobin, simply by clicking on it, they get the picture or it get embedded into my forum post. I can obviously also download it in different resolutions. I can look at it in different modes and I can edit everything I have already done. And when we go here in actions, you see that I can also upload an uncompressed source, for example, an XISF from PixInsight 
just for safety reasons that if my hard drive crashes, if my computer burns down, I still have it. I can also upload new revisions or send it to my group, for example, to my Switzerland group so that everybody can see what I'm doing. So last but not least, I want to show you how it works if you upload a picture. And I just processed one today, which I will upload now together with you. For that, I go here to upload. I have to give it a title. It's the Flaming Star Nebula. I see 405. I enter it here. It will be uploaded. I say upload. And when it's uploaded, I have now to enter all the metadata. So it starts with a description. HOO processing with RGB stars. This is not a collaboration, I did this myself. So I go on next. This is a regular picture. You see you have also electronically assisted astronomy, lucky imaging and so on, drawing, interesting. The data source is, I did it myself, backyard. Location, if there would be a common location, like with other astrophotographers, you could enter that here. Also groups, it's a deep sky object. Here is the thumbnail. I can just center it. It can also be sharpened so that also the thumbnail looks as good as possible. I could give a watermark. I usually do that before, so I'll not do that here. And then the equipment. It already knows the equipment you already used. So I simply have to click everything that I actually used here. Then we go next. And now comes the acquisition. So I have to add a session now. And what you see here is brand new. I think it's even still in beta. It's the first time that I'm actually doing it like that. This is new, it's much more convenient. So you enter the date. This was actually shot on February 12th. You select the filter, the number of frames, 45, and the duration was 120 seconds. I add a second session, this time it's with the Optolong. There are 20 frames by 40 seconds, and we're done. You could give a license if it's commercial, and with that actually I can save it. And it starts blade solving now. And as you see now, it's in the staging area, so it's not yet published. And to publish it, I have now to pr press here Promote to Public Area. By default, my followers get notified. I could skip that. Then I say continue. And with that, it's published. And you see below the technical card, everything we entered, the histogram. What's not yet available is the plate solving. This still takes a time. And when this is through, then it will also show the plate solving and the sky map. And while we're waiting for that, when you go up here, you see you submitted your image for the IOTD TP considerations. So this is the picture of the day. And automatically, when you submit a new picture, it will be submitted to these contests. So every time you could be the lucky winner or not. I hope this was interesting. And I hope that one day I'll see you and your photos in Astrobin. And I'm obviously also very interested what you think about Astrobin, if you know some secret tips which I have forgotten to show, so please leave it in the comments below. See you next time and clear skies.